Prostate cancer is a disease with highly variable outcomes. Many patients have a slow-growing cancer that will never threaten their health, while others have aggressive cancer that rapidly progresses. A variety of new tools are available to help urologists match the right patient with the right treatment course. From cutting-edge tests exposing the molecular basis of these cancers to imaging techniques that can allow precise targeting of cancers. A urologist that understands the use and limitations of these tools is critical to get the best outcomes. We have a very special guest joining us today. The opening statement read here today was actually taken from our guest's personal statement, and he continues to remain committed to it as he remains on the forefront of prostate cancer care in the 21st century. Welcome our guest today, Dr. Chris Barbieri, urologist from Weill Cornell Medicine. The show today is brought to you by our sponsor, the Prostate Health Academy. The Prostate Health Academy is launching soon, and this is exciting news. The Academy will be an essential community for individuals wanting to learn more about prostate conditions, connect with like-minded individuals, and improve their overall health. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On a weekly basis, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. It is indeed an honor to be able to introduce to our Prostate Health Podcast listeners today, urologic oncologist Dr. Chris Barbieri. He attended Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, where he obtained both his MD and PhD degrees. He completed both his urology residency and urologic oncology fellowship at Weill Cornell Medical College. Dr. Barbieri's research interests include using genomic data to define distinct molecular subclasses of urologic malignancy with a particular focus on prostate cancer. His work has led to recognition as a prostate cancer foundation young investigator and a urology care foundation research scholar. He is also the recipient of a career development award from the National Cancer Institute to fund his work on prostate cancer. In addition, Dr. Barbieri has also been recognized as a rising star in urology research by the American Urologic Association and with a clinical investigator award from the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation. He is both a prostate cancer surgeon and a highly active researcher in prostate cancer genomics in the Sandra and Edward Meyer Cancer Center at Weill Cornell, which has allowed him to stay at the forefront of prostate cancer in the 21st century and delivering the best possible care to his patients. Dr. Barbieri, welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. So when it comes to prostate cancer treatment, why is there not a one-size-fits-all solution for men with prostate cancer? Well, the shortest answer to that is that it's not really all one disease, that this is a spectrum of diseases with different underlying genetics for different types that leads to different biological behavior, and that leads to very variable behavior clinically in terms of how some patients do well and how some patients do poorly. So what are some of the initial factors that we are able to look at in distinguishing between men with low-risk prostate cancer a scenario where maybe they may be a candidate for surveillance versus more higher risk disease? Sure. So there's a number of different factors that we consider when we consider how bad prostate cancer is and how aggressively it needs to be treated. So among the most important things is the grade of the cancer, which essentially is how abnormal things look under the microscope to the pathologist. That's often represented as the Gleason score, and patients will hear that term a lot. The amount of cancer that's found on the biopsies, as patients who have undergone a biopsy know, urologists will take many shots into their prostate. They can find that the entire prostate is filled with this cancer. They could find that just one of those needles hit any cancer whatsoever. So that can be a very wide variation in the amount of cancer that's there. 
a patient's absolute PSA level correlates roughly to the total amount of cancer that's present. And then where the cancer is found. When we do imaging tests, can we find that the cancer looks like it's left the prostate or is completely confined to the prostate are some of the very initial things we look at, the sort of basic clinical parameters. In addition, there's becoming available more advanced testing, more advanced tests like MRI of the prostate that can show us where the cancers are, and more advanced tests like genomic tests that can kind of give us a little more insight to the biological character of those cancers. Well, and you kind of alluded to this a little bit in terms of maybe some men that may kind of fall into more of a gray area. And, you know, in terms of how are we, you know, really able to better guide these patients in determining which cancers that might be a little bit more aggressive versus those that might be a little less aggressive? So a key feature of prostate cancer is that many, if not most men, will die with the disease and not of the disease. So aggressive can be a relative term, first of all, based on the life expectancy of a patient. Secondly, so once you've sort of gotten a sense of the patient's life expectancy and how much attention you need to pay to this cancer, the tiebreakers you can use to understand how aggressive are the factors I described, but also the things like advanced imaging and things like genomic testing that can really provide a little more insight into the biological character of those cancers and how they're more likely to act aggressively or indolently. Well, that's perfect. And, you know, so I think at this point, you know, with on that with genomic testing, I think, you know, I'd really love to dive in a bit deeper and focus in on genomics in today's podcast. And I think there can be some confusion among the general public when they begin hearing it not only about genomic testing and prostate cancer, but also genetic testing and prostate cancer. Could you explain what is the difference between genomic testing and genetic testing for prostate cancer? Yeah, that's a fantastic question, and you're right. There can be a lot of confusion among the public about what those two things mean, and even confusion among uh, urologists and other doctors as well. So I think the key features or the key words to understand are the ideas of germline genetics and somatic genomics. So germline genetics refers to mutations that you can get from your parents and that you can pass on it to your kids, basically. There are those hereditary mutations that can be associated with prostate and other cancers. And that's typically what we're looking for when we talk about genetic testing, those kind of familial traits that can uh, be passed down through generations that are present in every cell in a man's body, basically. Somatic testing or testing of the tumor tissue, which is more often called genomic testing, is looking at the things that are just happening in the cancer. So they're not things that can be passed down to your kids. They're not things that you get from your parents. They're things that arise in that cancer. And both of those levels of testing can provide additional information in terms of insight into how a cancer might behave. That's an excellent response and appreciate that. Now, I'd like to look at several scenarios and get your thoughts when considering genomic testing. You know, the first scenario would be for men who've had a prostate biopsy and the results showed no cancer. So how does genomic testing come into play for the the men in your practice in this situation? Yeah, so there are a variety of tests that are available for a man where the biopsy has not found cancer. But for whatever reason, a urologist may be suspicious that they're missing something. You know, that could be because the PSA remains high and is continuing to get higher despite that negative biopsy. It could be because on an imaging test like an MRI, it shows a suspicious spot that might not have gotten hit with the biopsy. So the types of testing you can do in that situation uh, in terms of genomic testing are essentially looking for evidence that there are some cancer cells there that you haven't really seen under the microscope. There's a couple of different ways to look at that. Sometimes there are some tests that look at the tissue that was taken on the biopsy to see if there are features suggesting it just barely missed some cancer. There are tests that look in the urine of these men for markers that are only made by cancer cells to indicate, again, that the biopsy may have missed something and we have to go back and look a little bit harder. Well, it's certainly nice to have some of these uh, tests at our fingertips to really help guide men you know, in making those decisions kind of moving forward. But now for the second scenario, we briefly touched on this a little bit earlier, but again, for men who have had a prostate biopsy and the results showed cancer present, 
but their urologist is now kind of wondering if this is a scenario or a more of a serious form of prostate cancer or one that can be safely observed. For these men in your practice, you know, how has this genomic testing helped as you counsel men in this gray area? Yeah, it's a very uh, common scenario. It's a very important question that we have. I mean, these sort of scenarios or the scenarios that you can think of that you're trying to distinguish between is, let's say you just see a very small amount, relatively low-grade cancer. And if you see that, that can kind of mean a couple different things. It can mean that, well, there's only a tiny amount of cancer present in that man's prostate, which is great for him. Or it can mean that's just the tip of the iceberg, basically. And you've only seen the little bit, but there's a lot more there that's more dangerous. So genomic testing can sometimes clarify those situations in that it can, these tests are typically looking at the biopsy tissue that's already been taken. And then they typically look at the genes that are actually expressed by the cancer. And by testing those genes, and examining them compared to a database of thousands of cancers that have been examined with these tests, they can provide more insight into does that cancer at the genetic level and at the genomic level really look more like a cancer that's considerably more dangerous than you'd think just by looking under the microscope. So again, those are the kind of uh, tiebreakers you can use to sort of say, you know, wait a minute, I think we might be missing something here. I think we have to go back to the drawing board and rethink this before we just say this looks like low-grade, low-risk prostate cancer. Conversely, it can go the other way too a little bit. If you see a cancer that there's just a tiny bit and it's just a little bit higher grade, but you do a genomic test and it tells you it actually looks like it will act like a slow growing cancer, it can sometimes push you in the direction of keeping an eye on it a little bit longer instead. Now, have you found, you know, any particular various genomic tests that you found helpful for you in this situation or kind of a variety of tests that you'll like to use in this situation? Yeah, I think most urologists, you know, will gravitate toward one that becomes their favorite. You know, I don't advocate particularly for any one genomic test or one company. There are multiple out there. Oncotype is one test that's very commonly used. Prolaris, you know, by Myriad is another test that's very commonly used. Decipher biopsy, which is made by Genome DX, which is subsequently turned into Decipher Biosciences, another test that's very commonly used. They all have pretty good performance characteristics. They all are pretty reliable. So my advice to both patients and urologists is figure out which test you like for whatever reason and, you know, get comfortable with which one you like to use and sort of stick with it. And that that way you get a sense of how it works in your hands for your patients. And if a urologist is comfortable with one, there's no really compelling evidence that that means another one should be better, basically. So it's not the kind of thing where if a patient says, well, this one urologist used this test, why do you use this test? It's because they know it better and they like it better and they know how it works in their hands, basically. And that's great advice there. And so now I'd also want to get your thoughts on one last scenario when considering genomic testing for prostate cancer, this time for men who have already underwent a prostatectomy to have their prostate removed for prostate cancer. Now, what role does genomic diagnostic testing play for men following radical prostatectomy? Yeah, so after a radical prostatectomy, as uh, many of your listeners may know, there is a chance of the cancer coming back, basically. That chance is generally related to what are the odds some of the cancer cells got away from the prostate before, you know, the surgeon got there and was able to take it out. So genomic testing in that situation can, again, provide some insight of what are the odds that that tumor has actually escaped, gotten a little bit farther away from the prostate, and therefore the patient might benefit from getting some additional treatment sooner rather than later basically, in order to clean up what might be left. Now, genomic tests are certainly not the only tests we have in that situation. In fact, you know, a patient's PSA level after surgery is actually a very, very reliable marker of what are the chances of there being some tumor left, basically. So, you know, again, these genomic tests can sometimes be tiebreakers in kind of borderline situations. They can provide a little more information. And they can be uh, provide real insight in terms of who might need treatment earlier rather than later. Well, thank you for that. And this has really been an excellent review for our podcast listeners today on the role of genomic diagnostic testing 
and various situations for men with prostate cancer. I know we are running out of time here on the podcast, but for those interested, I know we had also just briefly touched on the importance not only on genomic testing in prostate cancer, but also on genetic testing in prostate cancer. Dr. Barbieri was kind enough to stick around to chat a bit more about which individuals may consider genetic testing for prostate cancer. Now, this will be available inside our upcoming Prostate Health Academy. For those that don't want to miss out on this opportunity, make sure you sign up for the wait list at www.prostatehealthacademy.com. Well, and I certainly congratulate you and your group for the work that you continue to do in moving the field along in terms of personalization of therapy for prostate cancer. Dr. Barbieri, any final thoughts today for our listeners? No, I think, uh, you know, first of all, you know, thank you for the work you're doing on this podcast. I think it's uh, providing a lot of insight to patients and your listeners. I think, you know, patients and listeners to this podcast should sort of keep an eye on the news. Basically, there's a lot new and exciting happening in prostate cancer. The field is moving forward very, very quickly, and it's offering a lot of new options for patients. And so, like, I think your listeners keeping themselves informed of sort of the newest developments and being able to discuss that with their doctors is going to be very valuable for them. Well, Dr. Barbieri, we really enjoyed having you on the show today. We could have really gone on another hour today, but thank you so much for coming on and really illuminating us on genomic testing for prostate cancer. So thank you again. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. We would love to have you join our podcast Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash prostate health podcast or just use the Facebook group search function and search for the prostate health podcast and ask to join. We'll see you at the next episode. 